This, this is the ABQ Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, we'll interview visionary business leaders to inspire the creative power and spirit that's in every entrepreneur. Discussing strengths, weaknesses, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together for a new future for local small business. What is up, guys? When I get a book, which is probably one of my favorite things, books, of course, always. Those are my favorite presents, favorite things I give to myself. I'm always ordering books. Go to eBay, guys, buy them used. There's just about every title that you can imagine. If it's a book that you want, go on eBay. You can find them with free shipping. Get them as low as $3.99. That's my little tip. But there's this book called The Little Book of Yes by Noah Goldstein. And I love this book because it gives 21 short essays and it outlines a range of effective persuasion strategies to get to a yes. It also goes into, and I'm going to go into this a little bit, and and I'm going to kind of use the book as an outline, and then I'm going to kind of give you some things that I've learned through business and through my life. But it's going to talk about not just getting to a yes, but if somebody tells you yes, and then they're taking advantage of you. And I know there's some of you that are out there right now who you're super pissed off because you're with a business partner, or maybe you're in a relationship, and you guys are just like... I'm done with this person. I don't like them. Why am I spending two years of my life trying to appease them when I really don't give a shit about them and I'm kind of always aggravated at them? And maybe you're in a relationship that way. Maybe it's a business partner that you have. I don't know what it is because you're afraid to have that conversation. We're going to get into that. So the little book of yes. Number one thing that they talk in there is giving. And I want to talk about giving, and then when people take advantage of it, we'll go into both those. But giving, giving to others is a first step to getting what you want. Think about someone that you want to persuade or something that you want, you know, something from. What could you do to provide value to them first? If there's somebody that is, you know, like, I had somebody tell me the other day, I don't want to give this away, so I'm, I'm trying to be careful in my words here, but I had somebody the other day and they wanted to get a job. And they were talking to me like, you know, I got laid off, you know, with COVID and everything, and I'm trying to find a job. And I'm like, are you collecting unemployment? And they said, yeah, and it looks pretty secure, whatever. I was like, why don't you tell them for two weeks you'll work for free as a tryout while you're on unemployment? You'll just volunteer your time and you'll run their social media accounts for them for two weeks. You'll come into their business and sweep their floors, empty their trash. You know, when business gets ready to close at 4.30, you'll come in there and help them out and do all that. Wipe down the counters, make sure everything's sanitized. You're like, well, I don't want to do that, Jason. Well, do you want the job or not? I guarantee you no one else is doing that. People, this is the thing that pisses me off. People think they're too good. You know, like even now, I'll walk into my business. I have no problems grabbing some bleach or Comet or Windex or whatever and cleaning a mirror and cleaning a toilet. I know at the end of the day, it needs to get done. It doesn't bother me. I can pick trash up off the floor. I always pick trash up all the time. I, I, I was so happy the other day at the park. I, I just, I had to tell the lady, thank you. She was walking around with a bag and just picking up trash at the park because there's so many people has been coming to the parks now because of this. She just took the initiative to do that. That's awesome. You know, none of us are, you know, we're a speck in the universe and in the time of eternity, we're nothing in our 70, 80, 100 years we're going to live. So to think that we're something special is stupid. It only hurts you. It's your fucking ego, guys. If you come to a place that you want to work at and you come to them and you say, you know, I can't get an interview. I can't get an interview. And you walk in there and say, I really would like to spend two minutes with this person. Say, hey, I'm looking at getting this receptionist job or I'm looking at getting this specialty job, but I, I will uh, um, work on your social media for two weeks so you can see how hard I work. And then from there, you can decide whether you want to hire me or not. No one else that came in there is doing that. They're just trying to show their resume and a piece of paper that everybody lies on anyways. No one looks at that shit hardly anyways. Guys, they may look how aesthetic it looks, and I encourage you to make it look nice, you know, modern and new, like you're coming with some new approach. And I don't want to get into that, but 
provide value. Think about that. Provide value with no strings attached. But what if somebody takes advantage of me, Jason? We're going to get into that. But right now, I want you to understand, you need to ask these questions. The book talks about this. Who can I help rather than who can help me? There's so many people that are walking around like, I'm not going to do this unless I get something out of it. You don't know if you're going to get something out of it or not anyways. And if you're coming into that, you'll never have a break. You'll never have an opportunity. It's like all these people that do video editing or music and and they're like, well, that's my music. I don't give it away for an intro to something. Why, why, Why can't you just give it away for free? You can make another song. You know, there's thousands of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that are making music. You don't know what's going to happen through that break. And, and, and you don't know what the thing that you do. I, I, I know I heard of a story of somebody that let them use their music for a podcast. The person heard the intro to the podcast of the music that was in the music industry because they happened to listen to that podcast, ask who that person was that did that. And then they got their break that way. It was just a song that was given to somebody. Guys, you have to come with open arms and no conditions. If you want to work a badass job, you got to go in there, guys, with being a humble servant and serving. That will get you the farthest that you could ever imagine in your life when you do that. It also eliminates a lot when you can give with strings not attached. Well, then it's on the other person. And then we'll get into that. We'll see how we can handle that. Number one is giving. Number two is exchanging. Exchanging is a process of giving and receiving between people in such a way that everyone benefits. So if you feel that people often take advantage of you, you may be saying things like no problem, you know, oh, you know, no big deal. You may be saying those things. If you're, you got, you got to stop saying that. Most of you are passive aggressive. I, I hear this all the time. It's like, really? What, if, you, if you got, I had somebody that did had a problem with me and, and they came to me and they were honest about it and they talked to me about it and we resolved it and I respect that person more and they respect me more and, and our relationship will be closer. See how awesome that is when you communicate, but we're so fearful that we'll just go ahead and do a task and then we'll do it shitty because our heart's not into it. And then we expect something. And then at the end, we're all pissed off, but really we'll smile and say, no problem. Listen how for when people say thank you to you. This is really important, guys. I almost like mentally keep a thank you diary in my head. I want to know the balance. If I'm giving if I'm giving $100 bills to this person and they're just taking them and, and they're using the excuse of, thank you. No, thank you. You got to think of it like a, a lame thank you is like somebody telling that they love you when they're cheating on you. And I don't want to get into monogamous relationships, polyamorous, all that stuff. I have a spiritual higher density living. I encourage you guys to download and listen to that podcast. It's higher density living. Alex and I, we go over all that all the time and get into that part. But, you know, if somebody's on social media and they're talking to 50 other guys or 50 other girls and and then they just sit there, oh, I love you. I love you. That I love you doesn't mean shit. They're they're meeting up with other people and all that. And you and we've all experienced that stuff. And it's like, whatever. You know, but the, the, you look in their eyes and they're all smiling and I love you. It's the same thing as somebody saying, thank you. And they just took advantage of you. See what in life is equal. And this is how I do it. I'll give you a situation. I had a, I, I, I'm in a situation right now where I have somebody that I've given a lot of my time and effort to in business wise, and I haven't received very much back. So I am going to be having a conversation very soon. I have to make sure I get you make sure you get all your ducks in a row and that it's logical, not emotional guys. Don't come to it. Don't don't just blow off. A lot of you guys will ruin a relationship because maybe they don't even realize it. Maybe they're they don't understand what you're doing. Maybe they don't understand exactly what the technical aspects and how many hours you're spending on something. They're just asking you to do something and you do it. And they think maybe they think it takes 20 minutes. And so they're like, Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. You know, when it actually took you 20 hours and they just didn't understand. So maybe that conversation needs to be had. But 
this thank you diary is really cool because you can keep it almost like a bank account. If, I, if I'm going to give a bunch of deposits to somebody, then I expect to take a withdrawal out of them. And that withdrawal would be, I always want to make sure I still have plenty of money in my bank account, but I want to take that withdrawal and I'm going to sit there and say, hey, um, situation here, you know, I'm giving a lot of time and effort and stuff like that. And I'm not really seeing that much return from your end or, or the effort. And I feel like you're just taking advantage of me. So we need to either, we need to fix this and work and see what we can do. Or um, we need to, uh, you know, we can stay as friends and keep it that way, but not do anything business. Or if this offends you or whatever, then, you know, we can go on our lives and I wish you the best of luck and move on and move forward. That That's a good way to do it. So look for ways to pay favors forward. If a colleague appreciates your help, ask if they could pass their help on to someone else in your team or network. This is something that I do all the time. If somebody says, thank you, I'll, I'll be like, no, you know, no worries. Is there anybody else you know that would need this service? Or they'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be like, is there anybody else that would pay for this service? You know, I normally charge, you know, $500 an hour. So would you, would you know somebody that would, you know, want this service because you never know. They may say, yeah, I have two or three people that would be interested in that. You have, you have no idea what they're going to say, but that's just the way that you're asking. You gave something and then you in return ask and you're asking them to pay the favor forward. Um, number one was giving. Number two is exchanging. Number three is gifting. People are willing to give back to others when they have first received themselves. Something that I've seen a lot is just little tiny, um, like little tiny, super cool pressed thank you cards that you can put a little gift card in there for Starbucks or something like that. There's always these ways, like creative things. If you know how to make things, make something for them, send it in a, make sure the gift box is really cool. You can go on Amazon and buy really good gift box for, you know, three, four five dollars that, that the box looks expensive. It's always going to make the item in there look better. Maybe you make you know, I have a friend of mine makes scarves and stuff like that. So a handmade scarf with a nice note in there in a really nice box is, you know, I, I was th thought of you, I made this for you is amazing. People, they just don't know what to do when they get gifts like that. We don't get very many gifts like that anymore. So, you know, these type of things are going to get you a step farther than what if you would just, you know, give lip service or whatever. So, you know, I, I have, let me give you an example. I want to help you guys here. I have a uh, friend of mine. What he does is with his clients, he always is finding things at Ross and, you know, those type of places because he's always wanting to, uh, like he'll go to Ross or Marshall's or whatever, and he'll find like, um, you know, different olive oils, different types of candies, um, really inexpensive, maybe little, little tiny trinkets that look kind of cool for the office or whatever. So he's always thinking of things that he can put. Um, and then he has these gift bags and then, um, he puts these little bags together all the time. And then he's always got, you know, five, 10 bags laying around, uh, with him. He'll carry one or two of them with him. And then he's always just giving people gift bags. And it's very, very inexpensive, you know, because you can find that stuff on clearance at Ross, Marshall's, all those different places, um, you know, home storage, stuff like that. So hopefully that gives you some. And, and just to say, hey, I really appreciate this. Thank you. Let me give you this little gift. You know, that, that, that goes a long way. Number four, cooperating. Thinking we rather than you versus me will bring people to your side in more ways than one. Next time you, you guys listen to this, next time you have a project or proposal you want to pitch, say to your boss, I'd really love to get your input on this right off the bat. Why, why, why does everybody's ego think that it has to be them? Do, let me ask you something. Do you, if you make your boss successful, what do you think he's going to do when he gets promoted? If you make your boss successful, he knows if you make him look good, he knows you also, if you, I don't care if, if you're a shift worker at McDonald's and you're in charge of two people or you're, you know, a manager and you're in charge of 200 people or you're a business owner, always give the credit to other people. You know, I really appreciate that. But Susan and Bill were really, you know, they were the ones that made this happen. I really want to thank my team. They were the ones that worked on this, got this project done. Um, you know, Susan, I know you say that we did most of this, but we work together. And Susan knows in her heart whether she gave 10% or 100%. That's up. Then always throw it on her. 
Remember I told you guys it's like tennis? The minute they serve it over to you, whatever it is, try to quickly as possible serve it right back to them. You know, I do that with emails and everything else. Just pound out an email for two, three minutes real quick with questions or whatever and get it back to them as quickly as you can. Just, you know, but let's say you've got a project or something and, they're, and the boss says, hey, um, Susan, I really need you. <laughs> we should use Karens right now. That would be funny. Everybody's mad at Karens. Uh, <laughs> don't get me started with all that bullshit. But um, Karens. The lady just pissed me off in the park with the dog. And, you know, every all you guys know I'm a dog lover. And so seeing that dog, like, being tortured, luckily the dog was taken away from her and all that. But, you know, seeing that Karen, you know, maybe you've got a, maybe you've got a boss that's like that. Just kind of a bitchy boss. Let's go there. And she comes up to you or he comes up to you and says, you know, I really need you to get this project done. Da, 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 da. If you turn around and say, okay, perfect. Um, what were you looking for? in this project, what would you like done? How would you like for it to, to be done? And then what time frames were you looking for? If you can get them on your side, it's going to, and they feel like you're, you're giving value, you know, without even doing anything, just your words are giving value or, or walking up to somebody, even though you don't need to just, I do this all the time. I already know what I'm going to do. And sometimes I'm surprised with the answers I get. I already know what I'm going to do, but I'll just see somebody and I'll be like, Hey, can I run something by you? I really would love your input on this. Even though I'm I'm working it or whatever, I don't know. Sometimes they'll give me a whole different perspective that changes everything and makes me shift to a different, or, or maybe they give me a really stupid idea. And then it helps me say, well, this is what normal people would think about this, you know, or the person that I really want to talk to is somebody that doesn't like the project at all, doesn't like me at all. That person's going to give me all the negative parts and then I can make my proposal bulletproof because they're going to shot the holes in it. And I, I can fill all those holes up um, with where I can come up with a conclusion on them all. I hope that makes sense. If you gain their input, the book says this, gain their input creates a convergence of ideas and is key to step in successful persuasion. And he talks about when you're dealing with standoffish colleagues, try to find out what you have in common and highlight that before trying to persuade them. Do a quick search on LinkedIn or Facebook for meeting someone for the first time and look for shared interests and common experience. You have to do this. Not This isn't just for salespeople. This is for everyone. If you're fixing to meet someone for the first time, go through their social media, guys. Go go through, look, go on LinkedIn, see where they're... You, I, I, it's a surprise. I went and talked to someone the other day. I went on their LinkedIn ahead of time and I found out that they were from where I was at in Washington State, but they were living in Colorado, but they went to University of Washington. So you don't know. It also, I always share the story of when I was selling a long time ago, I had went on Facebook, you know, this is when Facebook first came out. I had went on Facebook, I had an appointment with somebody and I had went on Facebook and I looked them up and come to find out like a month later and they were still having struggles with it, but they needed this, you know, thing that I was selling that their nine-year-old daughter had passed away. If I would not have looked that up, I would have treated them just like a regular customer. But when they walked in the door, you could still see that it was heavy on them. And I was so much more, you know, just calm and relaxed with them and, and caring because I knew and I could just couldn't imagine, you know, losing a child and what that would be like, you know, for a husband and wife to go through and then, you know, trying to move on, you know, after a month and it's still, you know, plaguing you and, you know, I just thought of all that stuff and it just made me more, you know, I, I'm not going to pressure them. I'm not going to, you know, so you can learn so much by going on somebody's social media before you meet them. It'll just make you, plus it makes you already feel like, you know, your friends and, you know, all that. Always ask for advice from people that you respect or you're smart. You will never bug them if you ask for advice. Most people are more than happy to give their advice. You, you think you're gonna bug them with something? If you're facing a situation, you say, who do I have on my phone right now that I can call that could help me with this, that I respect? Call them real quick or text them and say, hey, do you have five, 10 minutes? I need to run an idea by you um, of something that I'm working on. I'm kind of stuck and I respect your opinion. <laughs> You'll get a call every time. That's cooperating. Number five is pausing. Emotion affects all our interactions. So take a moment to check in with yourself before attempting to influence others. 
Yes, it's emotion and logic, guys. It's this double-edged sword that creates a yes. If you come in and and you don't know what situation they're in, they could have be going through a breakup. They could be, um, you know, pissed off at their husband. They could. There's lots of situations that could be going on in their head. You know, they could be battling an inner demon that they have. You know, that they're working on an addiction. Who knows? You don't know what's going on. So if they're emotional, keep your emotions in check. You never, if they're at a seven in emotions, you want to make sure you're at a three and then it averages itself out. I always look at that. It's like, okay, this person's kind of getting emotional. I need to calm myself down, be a little bit more logical. Before important meetings, interaction, ask yourself, what state of mind am I in right now? What state of mind am I in right now? What a lot of times I'll do, like, especially if I'm driving somewhere to meet with somebody or something or I'm going to do a phone call, I'll listen to a song that I love that gives me gets me in a good mood right before. I'll put my headphones on real quick and I'll listen to the song, you know, 10 minutes before I'm going to have the phone call or five minutes. And, and I just close my eyes and I relax and I breathe. You know, I just, just take those breaths, just relax, listen to the music, let the song influence you, let it be a part of you, get those feeling, smile, get those all relaxed. And then let me tell you what you do. This is a secret to every great phone call. Don't sit down. Don't sit when you're on the phone. One of the best things that I have learned to do is if you have the ability and you've got, you know, good headphones and stuff like that is go for a walk outside when you're going to have a long phone call. When you know it's going to be a long phone call, walk and talk. Just casually walk and walk outside. Let the sun hit you. Look at the trees. You're talking. You're moving. The energy's flowing. You sitting in a chair does not help anyone. If you can't do that, then stand up after you listen to that song. Stand up. Relax. Smile. Breathe. And then make the phone call. And I guarantee you, you will have the right attitude that you should have for that phone call. Find ways to guard against strong emotions interrupting your meetings. If you have to, if you feel your blood starting to boil and you're in a meeting and, and, and Bill, the blowhard is fucking talking his ear off and you're just like, what the hell? Shut the fuck up. I'm about ready to, I, I just feel like I need to say something. Some of you are that way. You need to remove yourself. Either you need to get up and say, excuse me, I need to go to the restroom real quick and then relax, go into the you know restroom, put water on your face, whatever, relax. Or if you can sit there, sit there. Kind of just close your eyes a little bit, relax, think of something that you love, your dog or something like that, and then put yourself in that right state of mind. And then when he gets done talking, look at him, tell him, thank you. I appreciate that input, Bill. Um, Let's try to get some more inputs from each each of you. Uh, Bill, if you wouldn't mind, um, I really like what you were saying. I like the direction that you're going. I want to be able to add to what you just said. So if you wouldn't mind taking notes. Um, On the rest of, uh, we have three other people that are in here. If you wouldn't mind taking notes on these three and what they were looking at, what they were wanting to do, and then we'll all compare them all at the end and see what direction we should go. See, that right there is going to change the flow of the room compared to you like, okay, Bill, you talk for 10 minutes. You need to shut the hell up. You know, I mean, uh, we've all had bad meetings, especially if we're dealing with people. When asking someone for something, make sure that it's a good time. If they seem upset, angry, or troubled, come back later. Don't feel like, don't make it about you. How many times have you done that where you've walked into an office of somebody and you're like, I need to get this handled. And then you look at them and they're like crying with the tissue in their hand. And then you want to drop, hey, is this a bad, if you ask somebody, is this a bad time? They're, they're always going to tell you, especially if you're the boss, guys, if you're the boss or the owner of a business and you ask them, this is a bad time, they're always going to tell you no. They're not going to be honest with you and say yeah, it's a really bad time. You know, I'm going through some bullshit. You know, I haven't had, you know, I'm, I've smoked cigarettes for 20 years and I haven't had a cigarette in, you know, a week and I'm just freaking the fuck out. You know, no one's going to tell you that stuff. One of the great things that you can see and that I believe in more than anything, and this is in, it, it has helped me and you're not going to like this word because no one really likes it and that is compromising. And this is number six. First request can significantly influence the sets of later ones. So start with the high demand and then compromise. Always go, if you're, especially if you're in sales or whatever, always go through the roof. Go super high. You can always go lower. 
It's the wood. You can always cut a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. If you've ever done trim around cabinets and stuff like that, you'll ruin that whole piece and it'll look horrific if you cut even an eighth of an inch too low. So you're better off trim a little bit, trim a little bit, trim a little bit, trim a little bit. It's really simple. When it comes to agreeing to requests, people are often much more likely to say yes to a smaller request immediately after they have said no to a larger one. So if they say no to you, ask for something a little bit smaller. Ask yourself, what is my ideal goal and what would I be prepared to accept as a compromise? I've seen people walk away from negotiations over a hundred dollars and it'd be a ten thousand dollar proposal. And it's like, really? A hundred bucks is that important to you? Why wouldn't you just, you know, it, why, why wouldn't you just say we're a hundred dollars away? And I, I know I can't discount this product or service past this. And I know we have this hundred dollar difference. Is there anything that we can do that would create more than a hundred dollars of value besides taking off the price that I could do for you monthly? Would it be, would you need some training of this product? Would it help if I went and would that be worth it to you if I went and trained this person, this person, this person, this person? What if we did some coaching and after they were using the product, we turned around and we came back a week later and we did video Zoom um, training with them to see how they're going and then they could, you know, get questions and answers and we can figure that out. Would that be something that's worth to you? I've seen too many people, they just get so rigid and so locked into it and unflexible. It's like compromise, compromising away. I didn't go, I didn't give them the hundred bucks, but I'm going to provide value that's equal to that. Avoid the temptation to reduce your opening request and the belief that it will be rejected. The word no is your friend in situations. Be bold and make a second request. You want to get to a no. A no means they're interested. Believe it or not, if someone is like, nah, 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 but if they turn around and and, and they tell you no, and then listen, if they say no, I don't really like the price or no, I don't think my company would need that product, then they're just giving you an objection, guys. That's all it is. It's not a solid no. You just got to find a way and be creative enough to get to a yes. Take the no to a yes. Number seven is knowing. Big idea. Demonstrating your expertise and knowledge before you start speaking will make sure that people listen. You want to come off right off the bat, not as a Mr. Know-it-all, but you need to have tailored it enough where you've asked enough of questions from that business where you know their main problem is. And then you need to hit that. Your sentence should be right off the bat what the problem is. Guarantee it works every time. I mean, as long as you're not singling out somebody or, or, you know, going against them personally or it's an attack. But if you say, I know the profit margins have been declining for the past year, here's a solution that I feel that our product or service will be able to help you with that. Wherever possible, arrange for someone else to introduce you. That always works. If you if they know somebody and you can get them to introduce you, that works. If this isn't possible, send your biography or profile in advance of any meeting. Send your links, social media links, so they can see you and see that you're, you know, having fun and you're happy and all that. I always do that. I'd say, hey, Jim, here's a little bit more about me. Would love to be able to when we meet. Um, I know we'll be talking about this, this, and this. If you have any concerns, um, we can have the meeting before the meeting. A little five-minute phone call a lot of times can help because I know we'll be having this meeting in a week and I can get that information for you. Feel free anytime to text, call, or email me. If you think of something before the meeting that I could do my homework on for you. Very, very simple to do. Uh, Number eight is admitting. So number eight is by being upfront about the downsides of your ideas, you can increase your authenticity and your persuasiveness. The pratfall effect describes how the attractiveness of a person increases after they admit a mistake, but only if they're relatively competent in the first place. So we actually, this is really interesting. Psychologically, we're actually attracted to somebody more if they can admit mistakes. If they admit mistakes, but then we feel in the back of our heads that they're confident enough to be able to fix that. It makes them seem more genuine and real. So in order to embrace your small flaws, you need to be aware of them. Uh, I always make a list of certain things that I know that I need to work on or I know that are flaws. If you don't know what your flaws are, ask somebody else. I guarantee you, if you have somebody that's really close, that friend that just doesn't give two shits, ask them and they'll tell you. 
Don't be afraid to admit to mistakes or small bad habits. I'll do that in meetings all the time. It's like, you know, I know I can be kind of quick with this, or I know sometimes my words can be too fast. I'll talk too fast. If I'm talking too fast, please let me know because I want to make sure that you understand this and that we're in agreement on this. And then number nine is asking. Asking for help can be an effective way of building bridges with people. People always love to help, guys. If they're a good person, they, they always love to help. It's, it's, a very, it's a very simple thing to do to ask because it makes them feel valued. If you're in a team, you, you should be asking every team member for help. Even if you've got it and you know, we talked about this before, ask. Number 10 is conversing. When it comes to successful influence, it's good to talk. Next time you're on a plane, a bus or something, just look at the person when you go to sit down and say hello to them. If they have headphones or whatever, you know, don't do that. But if... Um, if you're going to sit down, just be like, hello. Um, you know, and they may say hi back to you or whatever. If you have a hard time introducing yourself, this is, you can practice introducing yourself in front of a mirror, eye contact, genuine smile, introduce yourself. You don't have to do the handshaking thing now because of COVID and all that, but, um, it's a good thing to have the ability to have a good yes, to make that good first impression. You need to practice that. Number 11 is humanizing. When it comes to persuading audiences, stories trump facts and humanity beats statistics. Every freaking time, guys, have stories of success of whatever it is you're trying to sell, whatever it is that you're trying to do. If you're trying to persuade somebody to say yes, show them how they're going to be safe. You know, it's the Maslow's hierarchy. Show them all of those. And I guarantee you, um, you'll get to a yes. People love stories, guys. You do. We all pay attention to a story over what is being said. You guys have probably tuned me out like 20 times. I do that on podcasts too. And then somebody starts sharing a story. Next thing you know, I'm engaged and I'm on it and I'm listening. Whenever possible, use pictures of people as well instead of charts and spreadsheets. This is a good thing. I, I had somebody one time pitch to me and they went around the business and had taken pictures of all the employees doing different tasks and smiling and use that as part of their uh, pitch to me for business. And I, that was just amazed. It made it look personal and it was great. You know, I mean, there was like really good professional. If you, if you have a high end product that you're trying to sell to somebody that's maybe 10 grand a month or something like that, hiring a professional photographer to go around that business and take amazing pictures of those, of the employees. And then at the end of your presentation saying, Hey, you know, I, regardless if you're taking you know, this or not, I want to give you this thumb drive. This has those pictures that I took of, of your business and your employees. You have an amazing business, amazing culture here. I really loved uh, being able to talk to everyone. And it shows the hard work that you've put in as an owner to be able to have the ability to have these type of employees that you have here. <laughs> Come on, guys, really? What, what, what do you think? What do you think somebody's going to say to that? They've never had a presentation like that. Number 12 is liking. To get someone to agree with you, get them to like you first. The first step is getting someone to agree with you is often to make them like you. Increase as possible by, you guys got to, if they've got a, a Seattle Seahawks shirt on, you need to talk about Seattle Seahawks. You need to know enough, just a little bit enough. If you go on their Facebook and you saw that ahead of time, that it's just Seahawk after Seahawk after, do some research, get online. You got Russell Wilson, the quarterback. You got all kinds of stuff you can talk about. The coach and, and you know, what their season was. Just do a little bit of research real quick. Maybe go get them something, a little Seahawk thing, a little Seahawk pin or whatever. You know, it can be 10 bucks and under, whatever it is, you, it will help you. Maybe their background is the same as yours. Maybe you guys have the same interests. Maybe they like to fish or they go camping or hiking. You know, go to REI and grab something. Um, or maybe the experiences that they've had, you know, maybe their master's degree was, you know, the same one that you got when you looked at through their education and stuff, whatever it may be. Uh, number 13 is complimenting. It is not enough for someone to like you. Find genuine ways to show that you like your listener and make them feel seen. Before asking someone for something, think of one good thing about them and include a compliment in your conversation. Guys, people love to hear compliments. You know, wow, that's amazing. I really love, I, I did this the other day. I really love that turquoise jewelry. I do. I actually, I think it's really cool and it's unique to New Mexico here um, with, you know, the handcrafted Indian jewelry that's here in New Mexico. It's just amazing. 
Um, I've went and went to different secondhand stores and stuff like that here in um, jewelry stores locally here in Albuquerque and I purchased some just because I think it's super cool. And so a lady had a necklace with a bunch of turquoise on it. Just super cool. I was like, where'd you get this? It was from her great grandma. I was like, wow. You know, there was a huge story behind it and she shared it for like five minutes. You've got to be able to make sure you think, how can I cultivate a positive relationship? How can I compliment them specifically? Not in general. Oh, I love your hair or, or you know, great. Say, those are great eyeglasses. Where'd you get those? I, I, I need to get my eyes checked real soon. And I was looking at purchasing glasses. Where'd you get those at? See, that's being specific. People will feel positive towards you when it comes time for you to ask for a yes or a favor. And they'll be more likely to say yes if they feel like you appreciate them. Labeling. Labeling involves assigning a trade attitude, belief, or another label to a person before making a request to that person that consists with that label. Get into the habit of genuinely labeling people with the sort of traits that are consistent with the quest you're about to make. This is such a good hack, guys. Be careful with negative labels, though. Don't be surprised if bemoaning your friend's tardiness makes her even later next time you go out together. If possible, recall time when you've been labeled posy by someone else as hardworking, say, and remind yourself of the beneficial effects. When somebody labels you something, find something good about that person and label them that. So, you know, Susan's late all the time, but when she does come to work, she works her ass off, but she's usually 10, 15, 20 minutes late. What I would do is pull Susan in my office and be like, Susan, you're about 10, 15 minutes late every day. I'm fine with that. You work your ass off. In fact, what I want to do is see if there's a situation where you're having to rush to work. Is there, is there an issue with, you know, taking the kids to school, you know, getting your husband out? What can I do? She's like, yeah, it is. You know, I'm always rushing to get to work, you know, and then sometimes I go to Starbucks because I really want a coffee. And then, you know, and then I'm always like 10 minutes late if I'm honest with you, boss. Okay, perfect. Well, here's what we're going to do. Instead of you starting at 830, let's have you start at nine. And then maybe you could be here at nine. Would that be fine? Um, Because I know you work and I just want to make sure that the other employees aren't seeing they're feeling like you could be taking advantage of me or whatever. I know you don't because I know you're putting in a full, you know, so many hours a day work. Or would it be now even more creative guys? It's, you just don't do mornings. You're not good with mornings and you're running around and so busy. How about because you're such a good worker and you've always demonstrated it? Why don't you work the first four hours at home? Or maybe you could work the whole day at home. If you trust someone and they work hard, why do you feel that they wouldn't work hard at home, guys? They're going to appreciate you more. They're going to love you more. They're going to work harder for you. So if somebody's demonstrated and that had that trust and that ability to do that. So make sure you label people with positive labels. Find something that they're good at. Maybe they dress really nice, whatever it may be. Number 15 is reasoning. Always give the reason behind your request. Before you ask someone for something, make sure that you are clear why you're asking for it and then make sure they know too. So many times we'll ask for something just kind of generically, like really quick, but we're never specific about it. And then we make, then we've thought about it a million times. They've never thought about it. And then we want to rush to it and not be specific because we're fearful. And then in turn, we don't make it clear enough. And what you need, guys, listen to me. What you need to make it clear about is what they're going to gain through this process. What are they going to benefit from it? If I'm requesting you for something and I need a yes from you, how are you going to benefit and how are you going to gain? If you can answer those to them, you're going to get a yes. Make sure that you use the word because during your quest to flag up your reasoning. Because, you know, I'm really asking for this because this is going to help you. This is going to, you know, we're going to have a higher ROI on this. You know, so if I could do this, this, and this, then I know this, this, and this will help you. You get that reasoning. It's very important. Number 16 is committing. To receive real commitment to your request, emphasize quantifiable public goal setting. Next time you want someone to commit to something, give them a specific goal. Bring up your commitments or those of others. And then say, hey, here's the outcome that I'd like to see from it. I would like to ask you, can you commit to this project? I don't want to give you this project unless you can commit to it. Here's the specific goal that I want. Here's what I want to have happen. Do you need somebody else that can help you get there? Can you make the commitment for this to happen? Because I'd rather take this resource and give it to someone else and have you continue to work on these other projects if you can't handle this one. But if you feel like you can... And maybe you need, you know, 
Jill and Mike to help you out, then I can do that. But this is really specifically what I need to have happen in two months. You, you see what I'm saying, how that works, guys? Number 17 is implementing. To encourage others to honor their promises, ask them to create a concrete plan from where and when and how they will do it. Remember, when creating a goal, it may not be enough to just write the goal down or a to-do list or whatever. Maybe they need to create an implementation plan with specific steps. Monday.com will help you guys. If you got a ton of projects that you're doing, use Monday.com. It's Monday.com. I don't get paid for them. I use it. It's amazing. You can tag people with different projects. You make a board, and then you put all the tasks below it. They can put it what percentage they're working on. You can put PDF files in there, notes, pictures, whatever. It just keeps everything super organized for that project that you're working on. So I encourage you guys to use that. Um, number 18 is comparing. What you compare an idea request to can be as important as the idea request itself. I'll do this all the time. I'll find a case study that I want the action to happen for that project. And then I'll compare it to that. If, if Nike did something and they did something amazing, then I'm going to use that to compare that to it. Hopefully that makes sense. I want to show them something that they can aspire to do to be, and then say, here's my, here's my vision. Here's where I'm at. Here's pictures. Here's case studies. Here's where we need to go. What do you think about that? And then I'll let them talk and then they're going to get, they're going to buy in on it. They're going to say, you know, I really like the pink on this, but I think, you know, now it's more nineties, you know, eighties was a few months ago. Now everything's kind of nineties with advertising that nineties look, this eighties pink may not be as good as this nineties pink with the tropical tree, you know, and some flamingos. I'm actually working on something with that, you know, because 90s seem to be like early 90s seem to be coming in right now. If you look at all the advertising and stuff that's going out there. Try to arrange when you have a meeting and you're comparing things like this and you have an important idea and they're getting buy in and they're sharing. Try to make sure that you go last in talking. Start off the conversation, ask a few questions and then make sure you go last. I'm telling you guys that will help you out more than anything. You have to understand going last is the only way that that you will get all the information out. If you keep interrupting all the time, which I see so many managers and bosses and owners do that, CEOs and stuff like that, they just want to talk all the time and they just constantly interrupt. And through that process, they never get what they need to get accomplished and they never get buy-in. Think about what or who your listeners will be comparing you with. It makes you give them a more favorable alternative. You know, favorable alternatives are always the way to go. If you can't accomplish something, then try to find something that's in their favor the other way. Number 19, almost done, guys. Following. People will follow others' leads, so make sure that you highlight those whom you've already persuaded. Be sure to show how people in a similar situation to those you want to influence have acted. People follow those most similar to themselves. So rather than using the testimony you are most proud of, use the one that comes from someone most like your influence target. If you're you're trying to talk to an exec at Nike, you don't want to be sharing what Under Armour is doing. That's their competitor. And they have a total different philosophy. Under Armour is about like hunting and outdoors and stuff like that. Nike is more about elite athletes. Under Armour is more right wing. Nike is more left wing. You know, you got to look into all that stuff. You, you you need to find things that have the same target, the same influence target, and that's something like them. Build follows on your social networks by highlighting your increasing number of followers. You know, that's something that if, if you, like with me, I have a podcast, I always share how many downloads I get because we get a ton. I share how many downloads we get, you know, um, that it goes on the right, ra- these podcasts go on a radio station too. I'm always sure that when I'm asking somebody to come on the show and I'm very detailed how We'll make sure that we talk about their book or their website or whatever so that they can, um, you know, I want them to benefit from being on the show. Number 20 is losing because losses weigh more heavily than gains. Highlight to your listener what they stand to lose. Not just how you're going to help them, but if they don't take your product, if they say no, here's where they're going to lose. Think about the things someone you want to persuade will gain if they say yes to your request. Now state those as things they could lose if they don't carefully consider your offer. I've done this a lot of times. This is really simple to do, guys. Very effective is everything that they can gain from your product that you know, you can reverse engineer it and tell them those things that how they're going to lose those. And have you seen other companies that that are like them that have lost from that? 
So let's say, instead of saying, you're going to gain this, you're going to gain this, you're going to gain this, here's how you're going to lose. And specifically, here's what happened to ABC Company. Use competition to increase your persuasiveness. If people come to know that your availability of services are demand by others, then these things become more attractive. Don't be available all the time, guys. Make sure you always schedule appointments. I always schedule appointments from like 4.15 to 5.15 or 4.15 to 4.45. You know, if it's a 30-minute meeting or an hour, don't, don't schedule over an hour meeting. or You know, never tell me, oh, I've got all the time in the world. No, you're busy. You're constantly moving. You should have your schedule that way anyways. You shouldn't have four hours just totally open. You should be doing things hour upon hour upon hour upon hour. Write it all out. That's how you develop habits. That's how you have great personal development. As you know, from this time to this time, you're working out every day. This is what I do. From this time to this time, I'm eating lunch. This is what I'm eating. From this time to this time, this is schedule it out, guys. You should schedule out your TV watching, your working out. You should be having a whole, your whole life should be, your brain loves it. Your brain loves it when you have a schedule and it's scheduled down that much. Your brain likes you doing the same things over and over and over again. Value your time so that others will too. If you say, oh, I'm free all day or you can choose a time, it doesn't work that way. Say I have Tuesday and Saturday available. Tuesday I have available at 1.15. Saturday I have available at 10.15. Which of those would you prefer? 21, ending. Big idea. If you want to have impact and for people to remember, make sure that you end on a high. Try to save the best news until last. It'll have a much bigger impact. People don't listen to the middle of your... They'll listen to the very beginning for a few sentences. They tune out. They're thinking about all the other stuff in their life. And then right when you get right... When you say... When you tell people that you're almost done, like I'm doing right now with you guys, then people will listen. So... What do I want people to remember the most? Well, here's what I want people to remember the most in this podcast is you have so much more potential than you think that you have in getting to a yes. You do not need to allow people to fuck you over all the time. You do not need to allow people to take advantage of you. You do not need to do half-ass work because you feel unappreciated. You need to stand up for yourself. You need to end those relationships, end that job. Maybe it's a family member. I don't give a fuck who it is. I don't, honestly. But Because at the end of the day, your sanity and who you are as a person is the most valuable thing. And I would rather go work for 12 bucks an hour than work for 1200 an hour and deal with an idiot that doesn't appreciate me. And maybe you're that idiot, and maybe you got some work to do. It could be that way too. If no one likes you, problem. Guys, you have to understand that it is time for each of you to start caring about yourself first. And through that, organically, you'll be successful. Organically, you'll be able to help others. I always say this, if you're operating at a 10, if you're operating at a 10, that's going to influence other people to operate at a higher level too. Let me give you some books real quick. You can purchase this one, The Little Book of Yes by Noah Goldstein. Also, Predictably Irrational by Dan Airely, A-R-I-E-L-Y. Amazing book. Shows you how irrational we are in our decisions that we make. Um, Old school one, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you haven't read that in a while, (laughs) you should read that one. Influence, Science, and Practice, that's a really good one. Robert Cialdini, C-I-A-L-D-I-N-I. Persuasion, A Revolutionary Way to Influence and Persuade, that's also by Robert Cialdini. Friend or Fro by Adam Galinsky. And then Yes, 60 Secrets from the Science of Persuasion by Noah Goldstein, which is um, the little book of Yes, the same guy, he wrote this one. And then one of my favorite books, Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Heath. Anything by Chip and Dan Heath are great books, guys. So I hope that helps you. Hope you guys will start valuing your time, start valuing who you are as a person. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Love you guys. 
I want our world to be a better place, and it starts with us doing what we know that we should do. In fighting Thank you for growth. joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share. And go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.